So guys, what's going on? As you may remember, I used to do a show called Trial Run, and the idea was is like a weekly podcast to talk about the news and all that. And uh, I had somebody else on with me. It started off with me and Brian Badsy Tech, and then uh, I started to take that and move over with uh, uh, Kane, DS Kane, uh, when um, Brian got busy with his channel. And so uh, I've kind of been figuring out how to fit it uh, for a little while now. And I think this is basically what I'm going to do. Um, since there's times like this week, uh, I missed uh, my th like what I wanted to say about the Nintendo Direct, some of the news that's upcoming, and some other things. I thought I'd try a new format for it. And so, here we go. All right, first up, I wanted to talk about the Nintendo Direct. Uh, I've got some notes here and some stuff. But uh, games I found really interesting that they were talking about. Let's start off with some of the puzzle game uh, news. Uh, so, Box Boy, Box Girl was announced. Not really my cup of tea. Looks interesting. I know a lot of people really are into that game, so that looks pretty good. Um, the other one for me was uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is getting an update. I absolutely love this game. It is freaking adorable. There's uh, a lot of like really cool little aspects, like ways that they were like doing things. I've not co quite completed the full game yet, but I love that they've added co-op in a free update. So now instead of you just like taking the other Joy-Con and shooting turnips at the screen, which is basically what it was before, um, now you can actually take control of Toadette, and it changes the way the puzzles are laid out and stuff. Unfortunately, there's no online play for that. That kind of sucks. It's only couch co-op, so I'm hoping in the near future maybe I can get somebody to, you know, uh, play the game with me and I can check that out because I, I really love that game. Also, there's more DLC coming. Uh, they said there's going to be 15 new stages, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker was actually one of the two games I got for my Switch, uh, the other one being Legend of Zelda. Zelda took over my life, but I'm looking forward to playing some more Treasure Tracker. Alright, and then they announced a Battle Royale uh, puzzle game, Tetris 99. I did not think I'd like this game as much, but the frantic kind of nature, the fast pace of it, uh, this game's really, really cool. It has more depth than I would expect for a Tetris game, the fact that you can, like, uh, target attackers. So basically, like, as you clear lines, you send junk to other players, uh, the other 99 players, and so you could tar have the computer target. People are getting ready to be knocked out. There's more risk there because they've got more junk to throw back at you than you do at them. And uh, the game's just like insanely, insanely well done. It's There's not much to it. It's just basically Tetris 99 stats and options right now. But I really like what I've played so far, and that game's great. It was one of the better shadow drops of the day. Another big one for me is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Uh, I've been looking forward to this game for a long time. It's made by a lot of the same people who did Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Uh, they've since long left Konami and now they're doing their own thing. And uh, one of the interesting things that I didn't know about until it came out was that they actually made a Kickstarter goal where they would make a mini sort of side game. And that was Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. And I absolutely love that game. It's an interesting take on some of the gameplay mechanics of Castlevania 3 and my god is that game awesome. Uh, of course the direct was going to be about Fire Emblem and it showed quite a bit. They really got into the lore of Fire Emblem which I guess if you're into that that's your thing. The game looks okay I'm still undecide undecided whether I'm going to get it or not. Uh, I have quite a few other RPGs to go through and so I'm not in any kind of real hurry for that one. I was also surprised to see Cat... Uh, also surprised to see Assassin's Creed 3 remastered there. Um, that's apparently coming on May 21st. Um, from what they showed, it didn't look like it was running very well. <laughs> and so I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think I really need to get Assassin's Creed 3 again. I already have it on my PC. There's no reason for me to have it on the Switch. Uh, one that was surprising was Hellblade. And if that's footage from the Switch, they did a great job porting that over. That game looks fantastic. Uh, Delta Rune is coming apparently on the 28th, and it's going to be free just like it is on PC, so I'll probably try that out since it's free. Um, they did a Shadow Drop, they showed a little bit more of Yoshi's Crafted World and uh, a demo, and let me tell you, I played a demo, it's stupid fun, I'm probably going to be picking this one up. 
they did a shadow drop on Final Fantasy IX and announced that Final Fantasy VII is coming in the next few months. And I don't know if they... Final Fantasy VII coming next month, so yeah, it should be here in March. So, anyways, uh, if you're into Final Fantasy and that's your thing, I've never really been a big, huge Final Fantasy fan. It's not that I don't like JRPGs, it's just a lot of those don't really do much for me. I did really like uh, Final Fantasy VI, though. And then a couple other ones that I thought was really cool, they showed more about Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Um, I don't know how to feel about that yet. It looks like it could be fun. I know there's a ton of people that really talk up the Ultimate Alliance game, so I'll probably keep an eye on the reviews and stuff when it comes out. If it looks good, I'll pick it up. Uh, Damon X Machina, they announced uh, when the game's coming out this summer, and then on top of that, they released a demo with four stages that I guess aren't going to be in the final game. They're just kind of like prototype stages, stuff that they've been working with for a while. And what i played so far, it seems okay. There's some aspects I don't really like. I don't like how when you click the stick for uh, descend when you're flying, you just drop like a wet salami onto the ground. You don't really, there's not like, I, I would expect it to be like you hold down the control and then drop. But other than that, what i played, it seems pretty cool so far. I'm still having a hard time figuring out some of the mechanics, but I absolutely love the art style of the game. It looks really cool. And of course, they opened a direct with Super Mario Maker 2. I maybe expected that one a little bit. I didn't really see it coming. I know people were saying that it was possible that one was going to be coming. But uh, Mario Maker 2 looks good. I'll, I don't think I'll get it right away. I'll see how the community kind of picks it up, what, like, what the system is for like figuring out levels and stuff. I've never personally played a Mario Maker. I don't know if I'd play levels, I'd just probably, or make levels, I'd just be probably interested in playing them. And so we'll see there, I'll, I don't know. We'll probably hold off for like a month or so, let people kind of build build some stuff, and then maybe I'll pick it up after that. And then the other one that was surprising was Link's Awakening. No real date announced besides 2019. I think this is probably going to be more of a holiday title. It sounds like this is a $60 game. I kind of have a problem with that. It's not that... The art style or anything's really bugging me. Like a lot of people, it's got this kind of like very plastic look. But at the same time, um, it doesn't look, it's not like in the same vein of like a Breath of the Wild. It doesn't seem like it's that kind of a deep a game. I could be wrong, but um, I would have preferred to see this in the $40 range. And one of the things I've just been kind of thinking about the Switch lately is if this is to replace something like the 3DS, like if they do actually do bad English. If they do a Switch Mini, okay, um, I don't think they need to have every Nintendo game at $60. They need to have some games, like for instance Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, that comes out at $40. And they need to they need to make these smaller little projects that they would have made, like on the 3DS, also on the Switch. And just sort of have those studios that have already been making 3DS games make that kind of stuff for the Switch at a lower price point. All right, so Reggie fils is retiring from Nintendo of America as a cheap, cheap, chief operating officer and president of Nintendo. He's being replaced by the senior vice president of sales and marketing for Nintendo of America, Doug Bowser. Yeah, the guy's name's Bowser. I, I get it. So Reggie's going to retire at the ripe old age of 57, which is really quite young, but it, it sounds like he's worth about $40 million, so he's going to be okay. He's He just wants to spend time with friends and family and probably live the, a really nice rest of his life. So uh, great for Reggie. He's done a great job over at uh, NOA, and uh, we'll see what happens. There's a rumor going around that he's when he goes out in mid-April, that he's actually going to announce Mother 3. If you don't know, it's kind of the meme's been going on for a while, is that everybody keeps asking him when Mother 3 is going to come out on every single system for years now. And so we'll see. I don't know if this is... I, to me, this just seems like um, whatever. But hey, I was wrong about Zelda to direct, so who knows. So the Xbox division at GDC this year is going to have a panel, and they've already announced that they're going to be talking about new software development kits for Android, iOS, and the Switch. So everybody's making this to sound like Xbox Live is coming to Switch, but this could just be so developers could put Xbox Live integration similar to the way it works on Minecraft into the game, not necessarily like 
an overlay or something like you would see on an Xbox. Not to where it's like actually integrated into the console itself, but we'll have to wait and see what they say at GDC. Um, the integration, a lot of people are trying to connect a lot of dots here. There's been a lot of other rumors going on, which we'll talk about here next, is that apparently Xbox Game Pass is supposed to come over to Switch. Now, I don't see how that's going to happen unless it's a streaming service. Um, the Switch and the Xbox are using completely different types of CPUs and uh, a lot of different hardware, and it's not like you can just make one thing work on the other uh, very easily. So it would take a lot of work. So the only way I can see 100 Xbox games working on a Switch is through some kind of streaming service. So maybe that's something that will be coming up in the future. That would help the Switch out, certainly, seeing that it's running on a mobile chip, and unless the game is being directly developed for Switch, if it's a port, especially with these new next-generation systems coming out, it's going to be much, much harder to pull off ports and have them look good on the Switch. So maybe streaming's the answer for the Switch. And to keep piling on, apparently in the EU, Ori and the Blind Forest has been listed on some wholesale uh, website as being ported over by THQ Nordic. Now, THQ Nordic's actually been responsible for porting over some of the uh, Microsoft Studio games over to PC. Um, this is not really something... People were trying to connect a lot of dots with the Xbox thing here, but this is not something new. This happened with Market and Ninja and... Uh, what was it, Dust of Elysian Tail? Both were in kind of a similar boat. And those games actually even got ported to Linux on PC. So we'll see. Maybe there is something to all these rumors, but I don't want to get you guys all riled up and be like, oh, Xbox is coming to the Switch. This is going to be out. No, I, I don't know for sure. Nobody knows for sure. Just fun rumors at this point. All right, and the last one I'm going to talk about today is just a little commentary on my current gaming habits. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. And I've noticed I've not been playing on PC a whole lot. And I've been kind of shying away since I've got a Switch. And I've been thinking about some things. And honestly, just like 4A Games deciding to bring Metro Exodus or pull it off Steam and make it exclusive to Epic Game Launcher, I was like really trying to think why that bothered me so much. And really what it comes down to is one of the reasons I came back to PC after so many years is PC, whether you like it or not, is a little bit more complicated than the console. And there's a little bit more required to game on a PC on your, a little bit more effort by you. And whether that's just uh, keeping drivers up to date, whatever, okay? You can't deny it. And it's gotten to the point these days where it's, it's fairly easy. Like, I've never had a time where I don't get, like, a notification on the corner of my PC saying, hey, you've got a new driver, Radeon driver update or whatever. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy. It's just one of those things. And then if you're putting the PC together, obviously there's that and the care and maintenance of a PC, which there is, uh, with a console, typically when it breaks, you just get a new one. That's how it's always been with those. So one of the things I loved about steam was the fact of some of the services. So before discord became big or I can't remember what the other services were, I think it was GameVox or something like that. And then, there's other stuff out there too. Anyways, uh, me and my friends, we used Steam Chat. They had they have party chat, they have regular chat between two people and stuff like that. And it worked out pretty well. Everybody's on Discord now, they kind of stole that thunder. And Discord's now becoming a game launcher in itself, which is annoying. And there's so many freaking game launchers, and then people have launchers to launch their launchers. It's just stupid. I don't... I, I You may not like me saying this, but I don't like it, and I don't have to. It's just... It's the way I feel about it. And on top of that, there's a lot of things I like about Steam. I like some of the support they're doing for Linux stuff. I really hope Linux is the future because I'm not a huge fan of Windows, and I've been very vocal about that before. Uh, I've been kind of invested in it. This little strange controller here <laughs> with the touchpads and stuff, a lot of people don't like, but I feel like if you really invest some time into this, then you're like, oh my god, I can't believe I hate it on this thing. When I first started playing with this, I hated it. I spent uh, at least a good couple months getting used to it, and now I'm like, this would be my preferred controller and everything if I could. The fact that Metro is on Epic now, and I can't easily use the Steam controller unless I launch another application that allows me to use the Steam controller outside of Steam. 
it's get it's irritating when you have to say stuff like that. But I love I love this thing, and I don't you know I can't use it in like half these applications. And then there's like the other service of like Steam streaming. Um, I actually have a Steam link for the TV. It's great. I love it. Can't use it because there's all these games scattered across the thing. And I think the thing, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, here is that when Metro, a game that's not attached to Epic in any kind of way, became exclusive, then I started thinking to myself, and you gotta understand, one of the things that drew me back into PC gaming was the fact that you had a lot of these third party AAA games that were. Some of them were exclusive to an Xbox, some of them were exclusive to a P or a PlayStation, but they were all typically coming to PC. Like, they all agreed that that was, like, the neutral zone. Everybody, everything can come over there. And that was including a lot of uh, indie developers. Well, the problem with all that is, is now having a game like Metro only on one platform for a year, and granted it is a timed exclusive, is stupid because now it goes back to I feel like I'm dealing with this exclusivity crap that I was dealing on consoles on a PC which is supposed to be an open platform and it's really honestly stupid if you think about it because if you could fool yourself but where we're eventually going with all this is it's all gonna be streamed to your house like Netflix and stuff they all want to build a service and do it that way because there's more money into it and for that you know what I mean. But anyways, I believe Xbox is trying to do that. I think Xbox is going to kind of take an L this next generation just to build that up so they have like the most, the first most robust version of that. I think that's where they see their money coming in in the future and they're making a lot of investments into that. But it's an irritation for me. I don't want to deal with it. And it's been nice to have something like the Switch again where I just... And there's so many damn games out there. Not everything comes to the Switch. I get that. But I've just gotten to the point. I just pick it. I'll just play whatever comes to the thing. There's plenty of stuff for me to pick and choose from. It's not like when we were kids in the 80s or whatever. And we had like maybe two or three games come to the system at a time. We have literally 30, 40, 50 games sometimes come out in a month between indie and AAA stuff. It is ridiculous. There's a ton of choice out there, no matter what platform you're on. And, you know, when I get home from work, I don't want to sit here and troubleshoot why my game doesn't launch on, you know, the Windows Game Store, whatever the hell it's called, or Steam, or GOG, or whatever. And it's like, I like some of these services. I like GOG, the fact that those games are free, I can just put them on Steam and use my controller and all that. But some of these services purposely block this stuff. And that's a problem for me. So, and it closes down choices, which I believe PC is supposed to be about choice. That's one of the things I like about it. And I see that, whether in one way or another, being picked away a little bit at a time. And that I don't like. And if this is the kind of games that they're going to play, I might as well just play on the console at this point. I don't care. You know, I don't want to sit here... It's one thing when there's like little tropes, like I have to come home and figure out what's going on with the game or the PC or something. And I'm not saying this happens often, but it seems to happen at sometimes the most oppor inopportune times. So, yeah. Anyways, what's your guys' thoughts down below? What do you think about this uh, kind of like redress of trial run? Uh, let me know your thoughts. Is there anything I can add that you kind of miss from it? Would you like to me like me to do what you've been playing at the beginning of the show or something like that? And, uh, yeah, uh, look forward to seeing and hear from you guys in the comments down below and have a great day. Bye.